What's really good guys? My name's Jamie, welcome back to Officially Gas. Now today, I'm back with another review and this time it's in the form of this crazy, super sleeper, homemade, 750 brake horsepower Lexus LS400. Guys, this thing is just gonna be ridiculous, so stay tuned and let's get it. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> Two of you in here. Two of us. Yeah, thanks for inviting us down. No, you're yeah, more you. than welcome. Thank you for coming. This is um, this is team effort, and that's why you're both here today. Yeah. What have we got here today, guys? This is just craziness. <laughs> <laughs> this is our nice docile Lexus LS400. 750 brake horsepower, predominantly built as a drift car, right? Yeah. Yeah. Originally, we we bought the car because we just wanted the engine. Okay. We actually wanted the engine for another project. Okay. And we just decided that the the car was too nice to scrap the rest of it okay so we thought why don't we just build a ridiculous ls400 <laughs> because nobody was doing them you know this was a few years ago uh -huh. when, and people were buying these breaking them and putting the engines into s-bodied nissans and things okay, okay nobody was keeping the ls400s yeah yeah so we thought it's different yeah definitely so it's definitely different <laughs> <laughs> myself i'm very naive to what it takes to get one of these 750 brake horsepower i'm sure lots of people at home are too um do you want to talk us through what's been done to it engine wise to uh, get it to that kind of power uh so the engine it's got the original one uz engine that this car came out the factory with okay. so it's still a matching numbers car but uh well the, the main way it makes its power is it's got the biggest turbo that we could fit in the engine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So it's uh, a Borg Warner S366. Okay. Um, and the turbo, uh, it's got the biggest compressor housing that they do. It's the biggest one we could physically fit in between the engine and radiator. <laughs> um, and it'll flow enough air for about a thousand horsepower. Wow. But we're not quite there yet. You're not quite there. 750. And you've actually, and what is amazing, I think, and the people will like at home, is you've built this car on a budget on your driveway pretty much, yep. that's amazing. Yep. Do you want to talk us through um, some of the custom work you've done to the engine? The reason we chose this engine in the first place is that the base early 1UZ engines are extremely strong. Um, they're fully forged crank, forged rods, and they'll take a thousand horsepower, okay. standard, so you don't have to start spending money on yeah. uh, that's you know, amazing, forged isn't it? kits and such like. Uh, the compression ratio is obviously wrong because it's normally aspirated. Uh -huh. So basically the insides of the engine, all we've done is we've put race bearings in it, Okay. And we've uh, put Kometic head gaskets because the standard gaskets won't take anything over is it 14 psi when they. I do? think I think 14 <laughs> psi they decided to exit the engine. <laughs> yeah, so that was the end of those. So we've got Kometic steel gaskets. We've got ARP head studs, and we machine the pistons to get the compression ratio down. Okay. Other than that everything in the engine is stock. It's stock. That's crazy. And you're saying these engines come out the factory about 250 brake? Yeah. And, they, and they'll take near, well, they take about a thousand brake yeah. with slight modification. These engines were built as a homologation special for IndyCar racing. Okay. okay. And it never actually happened on the Toyota project. So they stuck them into these big old executive buses <laughs> instead. <laughs> so they're fundamentally a very good engine to start uh -huh, with. Uh -huh. And um, what supporting mods have you got to get it to that kind of uh, magical 750 brake horsepower figure? Well, so that's the core engine. Um, so we have big fuel system. So we've got three fuel pumps in the car. We've got bigger injectors. And the most important part of that is that uh, we've got a Haltech Elite 2000 ECU okay, uh, cool. for controlling the fueling and ignition. Got you. Uh, and we've changed it over to coil on plug. So as far as cooling is concerned, what um, modifications have you got on that kind of um, website? Firstly, we've put a super aluminium race radiator in it, which we've had to chop and change and change all the um, mountings and stuff because you can't get um, aftermarket parts for our LS400. For the Cooling side of the turbo, we have got a aluminium 600 by 300 by 100 mil huge intercooler, which is the biggest one we could actually physically fit into the car <laughs> behind the headlights. Also, one of the supporting mods on the engine is we've got a Nissan 350Z gearbox, because originally all LS400s were auto. 
Okay. So we've now done a manual swap on it. We've got a twin plate ceramic extreme clutch on it. Great. And we've got a flywheel that we machined from 22 kilos of billet ourselves in the garage That's down amazing, to about man. seven kilos That's of amazing. flywheel, I think. And also we used the Nissan carbon prop off the 350Z because it's only about this much too short. Okay. And made a little lap to go to go between that and the diff. I love I love this. It's it's a proper homemade car, isn't it? It is. No, this yep. this this is a. Yeah, it's a, it's a special one, and um, it being a drift car, obviously, there's uh, there's been some work done to the diff, hasn't there? Well, it's the standard Lexus diff, uh -huh. the one that came with the car, and it's normally open, and all we did is we took it out, we made two plates, stuck them in, and filled it full of three-phase weld, <laughs> and that was three years ago, and we've never had a problem with it. Let's move on to the interior, because there's a lot going on in here. I mean, from the outside, it's definitely a sleeper, but in here, when you open the door, there's a lot going on, so um, do you want to touch on some of the interior mods? Uh, obviously the first one, uh, the obvious one, we've stripped most of the interior out. Mm -hmm. um, we were keen to keep some leather and walnut though, <laughs> as, as, as a nod to its history. So we've got walnut here, and we've still got leather in the door panels. Oh, I love it. Uh, obviously we've got bucket seats in there. Yep. Um, this is a bucket seat uh, from my old drift car when I used to live in Japan. No way. So I've owned this seat okay. for, I don't know, 15 years or no something. Uh, so it takes me back to my 180SX days, okay. <laughs> drifting the uh, Nihonkai skyline. Oh wow. Because uh, I used to live just near Some there. history going so on the here. The steering wheel and the seat are both from my 180 drift car from Japan. So another thing we've done with the interior is obviously this car was auto when it came, so no clutch pedal. Of course. And originally it had a foot handbrake, okay. so we've taken that out and yep. replaced it with a Wilwood top mount clutch pedal, mm -hmm. and um, that sorted that out. And also cage. Yes. <laughs> we built this. We built this ourselves. We've got a pipe bender, and we we built this ourselves in the garage. Brought it out, and it's sort of half bolting, half welding. Okay. And door bars for twinning because you need that for drifting and it's just a six point standard roll cage amazing the main other parts of it is obviously there's a lot of electrical changes that we've okay. done um, we've got the Haltec Elite in here uh, we've got the Haltec IQ3 race pack dash okay I'm seeing a big hydraulic handbrake right there do you want to touch on that this car has ABS as standard okay um, so we put that in the bin. Uh -huh. uh, we've replumbed the rear brake lines, okay. um, so they're on the same line, so it's not a cross system now. The front and rears are on um, separate systems, okay. and, and we've plumbed the hydro handbrake into the rears. It does certainly help the drifting. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. And I've got to ask actually, yep. what does it weigh? Um, and also, or what did it weigh? And what does it weigh now? Do you think being stripped? Uh, I think the standard they're about 2.2 .2 tons. Yeah, two, on the plate it says 2,200 kilos dry weight. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. I think uh, I would estimate now it's 18 or 1900. Okay. Okay. Which is about twice as much as it should be for a drift car. The the real good guys with the drift cars, most of their cars are under a ton. Okay, should we uh, move on to the exterior of the car? Should we talk about the wheels, brakes, and suspension? The wheels, uh, forty quid off eBay. The Lovely. Lexus is two hundred. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> they do the job. It's only on seven Js at the moment. Okay. Um, because uh, we haven't got the budget for bigger wheels. Yeah, it's all right, it's all right. I'd love some tens, tens <laughs> on the rear and nines on the front. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, there we are. Uh, the suspension, uh, you we couldn't buy coilovers for the car, okay. so actually what I did was I bought some Mark III Supra BC Racing coilovers second hand, okay. and we modified them to fit. So the fronts actually go straight on, um, the rears were the wrong height, so we had to make some spaces to get the heights correct. The uh, rear brakes are standard. Okay. Um, the front brakes, all we've done is that we've fitted Mark IV Supra oversized discs. Uh, I got them for 20 quid off eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And uh, what tyres are we on for today? Today we are running um, Extreme Tyre uh, V2s, okay. which are their semi-slick uh, drift practice tyres. I think we've touched on it all. Um, should we go out for a, a drive? I That's think good. we should. I think so. Let's do it, boys. <laughs> themselves and they've basically documented the whole build on this car um, and you've got some really cool videos on there too haven't you? Yeah we've got the car documented, uh -huh. we, we bought it three years ago as an MOT failure, standard road car uh -huh. Uh -huh. and we've got, uh, I think at the moment we're up, we've 
just done part 35. Okay, okay. This, you know, some of the videos are five minutes long, yep. some are like half an hour or yeah, 40 yeah, yeah. minutes. And we've detailed everything that we've done yeah, all yeah, the way yeah. through it. And there's also a funny video of uh, your mum driving this drift car, a 74-year-old woman. The grandma incident, yeah. <laughs> and stacking it. <laughs> I guess you can find my one of my mother notoriously crashing it backwards into a tyre wall and uh, me having whiplash for three months after that. It was quite impressive. <laughs> so guys, if you want to check these guys out in more detail, you want to see that funny video, 74 year old woman stacking a drift car, <laughs> make sure you check these guys out. I'll leave all links to them in the description. So yeah, make sure you check them out. I'll definitely be worth it. to 60s with the draggy now this is going to be a very interesting one um i've got to say i think this is probably going to be one of if not the heaviest cars that have actually attempted to do this zero to 60. yes <laughs> um we're getting good traction today and it is actually dry which is um which well, is fairly dry anyway so yeah. it's, it's kind of working with us um what do you reckon this is going to get you've never done one i'd imagine um it'll do fives yeah okay. um if we're super lucky and we get everything perfect, we might just touch get into the fours. Yeah. Well, to get on the leaderboard, I think fifth position is something like a five point one two. Okay. So as long as we can get as long as we can get low fives, okay. we're on. I've if done we can get five and a half on budget tires. Okay. So I'm hoping we can beat that. Fingers crossed. All right, guys. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Let's get into it. It's his first attempt. We're just going for it. This has got launch control, but we're just going to go for it. When you're ready. First attempt was not brilliant. It was a 6.31. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> but that's without launch control, and that was just going for it. First attempt ever. Yep. Um, we're gonna go again, I'd imagine. <laughs> we're definitely gonna go again. We're going again. <laughs> when you are ready, sir, let's get it. <laughs> 60. Okay, that was better. That was a 6.20. Still not good enough. <laughs> we launched off a 20 pounder boost there. Oh really? <laughs> it was popping and banging. What are you saying, are you happy with that or? <laughs> we'll give it one more go and that'll be as much yeah. as it's gonna do. Okay, all right, don't worry. All right guys, so it's his final attempt. He's, he's pulling away in second. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. When you're ready, let's try it. Sorry, 6.52. <laughs> I think that's all it's got. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of tyre marks, guys. I think that's as best as it's going to get for today. A valiant attempt. I'll put the leaderboard up now anyway so you guys can see. Uh, it's been fun regardless. Um, it is what it is. <laughs> We're not going to be troubling the leaderboard with those <laughs> no, shots. unfortunately not. <laughs> Alright guys, so it is my turn. We now have Leon in the passenger seat. Uh, we had Richard, his dad, out before with us, or driving me, 
And um, mate, I, I feel like I'm in Mad Max. <laughs> this is guys, I feel like I'm in Mad Max. This is set up crazy. It's just, it's, it's bonkers. What you guys have created is bonkers. And um, you actually drive this too, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do drive this actually. I've, I've only passed my, my test in October, but <laughs> I've been at, to Teesside three times with it now, drifting no it. So you um, drifted and you yeah, literally yeah. just passed your test. <laughs> it's all on the YouTube channel, I'll be driving yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing, man, amazing. Well, um, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Um, guys, obviously, I'm not going to be trying to drift it or anything like that. I just, I'm not going to lie, I ain't got the skills, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm not going to try that. We're just going to do some pulls and just have some fun. We got the switch on 11, and it basically says danger next to 11, so uh, that's full boost. 750 <laughs> brake, 20 PSI? 20 pound boost. Um, so, yes, this is going to be fun. Um, heavy clutch too. Very. Twin plate ceramic Twin plate clutch. Ceramic. Guys, this isn't on rails, so it's a bit of a stretch actually to reach the, the clutch, but yeah, it, it's going to be a very interesting drive <laughs> at the least. So uh, yeah, bro, let's, uh, let's, let's get do going. It. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, first gear. Go. All right. Hey, this dashboard is crazy <laughs> too, isn't it? It's, it's, it's mad. As I say, it feels like we're in Mad Max. It's just ridiculous. All right, so second gear, 750 brake horsepower, 20 Hit it. psi. Hit it. Let's get it. Guys, honestly, my pleasure. Guys, honestly, these two, 
are just some mastermind <laughs> geniuses. They're, they're crazy. Like the engineering that's went into this is amazing and it's a beast. Bro, please tell the people at home where they can find you, man. So on YouTube, if you either search Turbo Shed, which is the car series, or if you search Scott Parts, that is the actual YouTube channel, it's my dad's motorbike business. Or on Instagram, if you search Team Turbo Shed, and everything we've ever done for the car, from the YouTube channel, we've got from the day we picked it up to a video we did yesterday, actually. Amazing. Three years, all of the information about everything you can, we've done to this car. Amazing. Yeah, cool, guys. Well, I leave all the links in the description, so make sure you go and check them out. And if you have enjoyed today, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you go back and check some of my other content out too, because I know you're like that. And we we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, man.